Welcome to the Continuum Lab. This is my DIY recorder MIDI controller and I'm about to show you how I made it. But first, a word from my sponsor, which is myself. The MIDI recorder is one of the instruments featured in my Continuum Lab workshops, which are all about making MIDI instruments out of recycled materials and which I'm currently offering to schools and institutions. If you're interested in hosting one of these workshops at your school, then get in touch with me for more information. So, full disclosure, I was thinking of a recorder when I made this, but if I'm being honest, uh, I guess it's just kind of a generic whistle or flute MIDI controller or something like that. As you will see, it uses very simple materials and techniques, and uh, it uh, also contains one of the DIY breath pressure sensors that I showed you in the previous video here on the Continuum Lab. So, let's get started. I don't actually own a recorder, although I used to, but I'll use this wooden whistle as a placeholder. This whistle has six holes, whereas a recorder typically has eight. So I'll add one here for the pinky and one here for the thumb. At one end you have the mouthpiece where you blow through, so that's where I'll put the breath pressure sensor. But first we need to make the basic structure of the instrument, so that we have somewhere to put the sensors. You might think that if we're going to make a tube-shaped instrument out of cardboard, then a cardboard tube might be our best option, like this tissue paper roll. The problem is that it's thin and flimsy, and also doesn't give us much flexibility as to the size and shape of the instrument. Let's get rid of that. Instead we'll be using some of this corrugated cardboard. This piece here is double corrugated and is very strong. Notice that the two sides have different sizes of corrugation, which will be important later on. You can also use thinner cardboard, like what this box is made out of, but most of my designs use the thicker stuff. First thing we need to do is cut the cardboard to size. For this instrument, we'll need a piece which is roughly 15 by 35 centimeters. This piece has a bend in it which I don't want to include, so I'll cut here, even if it's a bit shorter than 35 centimeters. I'll also get rid of this tape here. The next step is where things start getting interesting. We need to fold this cardboard into a tube shape and we'll use the corrugation to help with this process. On the side with the thicker corrugation, I'll count out three lines of the corrugated pattern and then I'll mark the fourth like this. I do this across the piece so that I have four marks dividing the cardboard into five equal sections. Then I extend the marks, essentially crushing the corrugation like this with the finger. This weakens the cardboard in one direction along a perfectly straight line, which is going to help us to bend it precisely, like this. Make sure that you only bend it along the lines we made, so that we get a nice square shape like this one. As you can see, that takes care of the basic tube shape, although there is a section left over, which I'll take care of in a little bit. Next up, let's get out some electronics. I designed this breakout board specifically for the Continuum Lab workshops, and it has everything I need to facilitate these instrument building projects. The microcontroller that I use is the Teensy LC, which is quite cheap but powerful, and very importantly it has USB MIDI. So the way that our cardboard tube folds up right now, the board doesn't actually fit inside, and that's where the extra section of cardboard is going to help. Let's remove part of that section, like this. Now we'll make a cut in the opposite section right here, lining it up with the first cut like that. And now, as you can see, our square tube has an extended section which is more than wide enough to fit the breakout board. Nice! There's a bit of material still left over, so let's prepare a couple of extra folds here and here, which will allow us to close up this section when we're finished. Something like that. Next thing we need to do is figure out where we want to put the keys. Let's fold up the tube and hold it together with this rubber band. So I'll need four keys for my right hand and three in my left hand. I don't have any fixed measurements for this, instead I just use my hand for reference. There. That's quite comfortable and it puts my thumb right there. Cool. Now it's time to actually make those keys. A while back I made this boxophone. This instrument has a lot more keys than a recorder, which is why I used one of my multiplexer modules, allowing for up to 16 sensors. But the recorder only has 8 keys, and my breakout board actually has direct access to up to 9 capacitive sensors. These are marked with a tiny letter C next to the pin, some in the digital section, some up here in the analog section. So I'll get out 8 individual jumper cables, female headers on one end, and now I'll be able to plug each key individually, making for a simpler circuit and simpler code. Nice. Okay, and now for the actual keys. 
Just like on many of my previous instruments, I'm using capacitive sensors for the keys, but in this new design, I'm going to solve one of the problems that these instruments have suffered from, which is the lack of tactile feedback from these totally flat keys. So for this instrument, I'm going to give each key some thickness by using some cardboard as a base. This thin cardboard here will work just great for that. Then I'll need some of this copper sticky tape and then some transparent packing tape as a dielectric layer. And that's all the materials. Let's make some keys. First, we need to cut out eight small pieces of cardboard. The specific size and shape doesn't really matter. If you want it pretty, then make it pretty. If not, then that's also fine. I'm going to cut off the corners to make a roughly circular shape, like this. Next, we need to cover each one with copper. So I'll cut out eight slightly larger squares of the copper tape, and then I'll stick each square onto one of the keys, making sure I center it so that the copper tape sticks out beyond the cardboard. Now I'll be able to fold the copper tape down over the edges of the key like this, so that the corners of copper are now on the underside of the key. Then I repeat the whole process seven more times with the other keys. There, that looks nice. Check it out, that's gonna work great. Now we need to connect the keys to their respective cables. But before we do that, we'll have to perforate the cardboard for the cables to pass from the inside and out. I'll make a hole next to each key position, like this, making sure that I leave enough room for the key itself. Before I go on, I'll just quickly number these keys on the inside for reference. This will be helpful when I connect the cables to the breakout board. Now we're ready to start connecting the keys. I'll get out my trusty soldering iron and I'll start out by putting a little bit of solder on each key, onto one of the corners of copper tape which I folded down to the underside before. This copper tape is super easy to solder to. Next, I pass a cable through one of the holes in the cardboard, lay down one of the keys next to it, bend down the cable until it touches the solder on the key, touch lightly with the tip of the soldering iron and it's done. Then I repeat the process again and again and again until all eight keys are soldered. There. But we're not quite done yet. Final touch on the keys is the dielectric layer. So I'll get some of this packing tape and cut it into squares as well. Make sure that the squares are large enough to cover the keys completely. We don't want any of that copper to be exposed. Again, we fold down the corners and just like before, you can make it as pretty as you want. And if you don't, then that's also totally fine. Now we'll attach the keys to the cardboard structure. I'm using hot glue, which is easy and fast to use, but you can use whatever you have on hand, glue, double-sided tape, whatever. So I'll stick down each individual key with a glob of glue, and then I'll also put a bit of glue into the cable hole to stabilize the cable. Then I'll repeat and repeat and repeat until all the keys are attached, like this. Again, if you want pretty, then make it pretty. I don't really care very much, but that actually does look pretty nice. Now that we have the glue gun out and before I start plugging in the cables, I want to fix the breakout board in place as well. Let's find a good position for it down here at the end of the instrument and then stick it onto the cardboard with a bit of hot glue. Now I'll plug in the cables, making sure to get them in the right order. This is where the numbered keys come in handy. I follow the order that you see at the bottom of the screen, so that key 1 goes on pin 1, key 2 goes on pin 3, and so on. Then I squash down the cables a bit so they fit when I fold the instrument back up. There, that fits nicely. And the keys honestly feel great under my fingers. Easy to locate without looking, which is what I was going for. And that's it, the keys are done. Now we need to put together the breath sensor. So for this simple wind instrument, I'm also going to make a super simple breath sensor. I'll need one of my CNY70 sensor modules, a food grade silicone tube, and a water balloon. I'll also need a small piece of food grade plastic, which I'll cut out of this lid from a food container. In the previous video here on the channel, I showed you how to make this simple sensor design out of a square cardboard tube. So for today's project, I'm able to just use the square body of the instrument itself as the structure for the breath sensor as well. The tube is roughly 25 millimeters wide on the inside, so I'll cut out a plastic disc a bit wider than that so that I can clamp it inside the folds in the cardboard like I showed you in that other video. Now I fold the disc down the middle so that I can insert it into the water balloon and then I unfold it inside the balloon to end up with this setup here. Next I'll insert the silicone tube as well, but first I have to cut out a small hole in the side of it for the pressure to escape through when I blow in it. 
Then I insert it in the balloon. This is how it responds to breath pressure. I'm going to put the breath pressure sensor up here in the mouthpiece end of the instrument. Flattening the cardboard where the sensor will go helps to make the insertion easier. Then I hold down the disc while folding up the walls of the tube, which then clamps the edges of the disc, holding it in place. Sensitivity looks good. Let's mark the position of the balloon. That will make it easier to position the sensor module. My CNY70 sensor modules are set up to measure things at a maximum distance of about a centimeter, so the instrument tube is actually a bit too wide. We'll have to make a platform to raise the sensor up to the correct position. Another piece of corrugated cardboard will work fine for this. Cut out a piece, glue the sensor onto it, then glue the whole assembly into position in the instrument, making sure to line up the CNY70 across from the balloon's position, like this. Then we'll plug the sensor module into the breakout board. I'll use analog pin 25 for this. Now we can reinsert the balloon disc and fold the instrument back up. I'll use a couple of rubber bands to hold everything in place. The recorder MIDI controller is now fully functional, but I feel like something is still missing. Hmm. I know, it's the mouthpiece. Check out the whistle that I used for reference. It has this distinct tip shape with this curve down here. So let's try to reproduce that. First I'll make a cut right here, the same length as the inside width of the instrument. That will make a flap, which I can then bend up towards the other side of the tube. I'll just make a couple of shallow cuts at the base of the flap to help with the process. There. This will also make the silicone tube from the breath sensor much more stable, and help to stabilize the tube shape in general. I'll cut out a small notch for the silicone tube. I apply quite a lot of hot glue to the bend zone, and then hold the bend in place while it solidifies. Then, once again, I'll reinsert the breath sensor balloon disc and close the instrument back up so that I can see where I want the mouthpiece curve to be. I'll just quickly draw it on here directly and then unfold again to cut it out. There. Let's fold it all back up again and see how it looks. Check out that mouthpiece. Let's get those rubber bands back on there. Yes, that's looking very nice. The final sensor on here is the calibration button. All of the instruments for my workshops have one of these, because the calibration routine is what gives me the flexibility in how I make all of the DIY sensors. I'm going to put the button here, where it's relatively protected from being accidentally pressed. Mark the position, then cut a slit for the cable, pull the cable through, and then glue down the button. There. Now I'll plug this in at digital pin 8. And then I can fold the instrument up again for the last time, because we are almost completely done now. The only thing that's really left to do now is to just clean up this end here a bit. I already prepared the folds before, so I'll simply apply some hot glue to the ends of those folds, and then hold everything in place while it sets. And we're done! I'm super happy with how that turned out, and how easy it was to put this together. Now it's time to plug it into the computer and put some code on here. I'm not going to explain the code in this video, but it's very simple to the Boxophone code which I explained in a previous video. There's a link to that video in the description. Both the Boxophone code and the new code for this recorder is available for download on GitHub. So I'll just quickly download that. Then I open up Arduino and upload the code to the recorder. Then I calibrate the instrument by holding down the calibration button while I activate all the other sensors one by one. Then I open up the Yoshimi synthesizer connecting everything through jack and now I'm ready to make some noise. So as you can see that actually works really well, especially considering the materials and techniques that I used to make it. The fingerings are based off of official recorder fingering charts, but I did take a few liberties specifically so that I wouldn't have to read partially covered keys, which is a thing with recorders. Now the capacitive keys here would be able to measure partial covering easily, but it would make the code a little bit more complex. Still, I might uh, implement that some other time. 
As I mentioned, this is one of the instruments that we make in the Continuum Lab workshops, which I'm currently offering to schools and institutions. If you're interested in hosting one of these workshops at your school, then get in touch with me for more information. Also, if you made it this far in the video, then you obviously like what I'm doing here, in which case you should definitely subscribe to the Continuum Lab YouTube channel and also check out the Continuum Lab over on Instagram where I post more interesting projects like this one regularly. And that's all for today. Take care until next time and I'll see you in the Continuum.